<clears throat> Thanks, Jamie. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, our topic for today is the third in the series, looking at dialectical behavior therapy skills. So our topic for today is interpersonal effectiveness. As a disclaimer that I've done with all of these, it is general information on DBT skills. I am not a certified DBT therapist. This is not designed to be a therapy session, really just general information. Um, and it should, it's on interpersonal effectiveness today. So we're going to just briefly um, remind everyone of the four categories, the four skill areas in dialectical behavior therapy. Our focus today is on interpersonal effectiveness. So we'll define it. We're going to look at some challenges um, and opportunities related to the use of interpersonal effectiveness. And then we're going to talk about four different skills. And I have two videos for you to highlight two of the skills. As a reminder, our four DBT categories are mindfulness and distress tolerance, which we've done so far. The last two are emotion regulation and interpersonal effectiveness. So our focus for today is on interpersonal effectiveness. So my first question for you, um, as I was looking for definitions, it was hard to define, but there was pretty much consensus that everybody knows what ineffective interpersonal interactions look like. Um, so I'm going to pause here and ask for examples. If you can think of an example maybe that you've participated in or that you've observed of an ineffective interpersonal interaction. I think what trips us up is that because you're highlighted, we can't see each other's faces. So nobody knows quite who to, to pop in on. And But I'm sure we have all have lots of good examples of ineffective interpersonal. Bren, I saw you on mute for a second. I don't know if my, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. um, I would say interrupting somebody mid conversation is pretty ineffective. Yes. <laughs> I see something in the chat. Okay, so the recent presidential debate may be a good example of some of that interruption. <clears throat> Not really listening, just kind of waiting to talk. Absolutely. So you're just waiting to jump back in, not even processing what the other person's saying. Anything else? <clears throat> so harsh tone of voice, uh, <clears throat> I'll go even beyond that, or, or being totally dismissive, um, somebody who can come across as angry or condescending or um, that they're not even paying attention to you, and then maybe not open-ended question, not asking open-ended questions, so truncating the, the conversation prematurely. Those are all fantastic examples, and we're going to talk about a couple skills um, or things to keep in mind to make sure that we try to minimize. They're going to happen regardless, but to minimize them as much as possible. So I would venture that we have all been part of ineffective interpersonal um, interactions. The goal of interpersonal effectiveness is really to assist with building healthy relationships. Um, those healthy interpersonal relationships that are personal as well as professional. Now, these skills are really designed to ensure that your needs get met. So this is not looking at skills to make everyone else happy at the expense of yourself. No, that's not the goal. It's really finding the balance to make sure that you are comfortable lobbying requests for what it is that you want or that you need. Um, that you're being effective in those communication strategies, especially if a negotiation is, um, is necessary, and that you're able to express your own opinion and start to grow some of those interprofessional relationships. A number of the DBT organizations talk about interprofessional 
interprofessional effectiveness as like a tree, the deep roots of a tree. Making sure that someone is able to express their needs, propose a request, do it in a way that's going to be effective, while also staying true to who they are, helps establish those deep roots that all of the other productive, healthy relationships can grow out of. So that was why I included the tree. That was my reminder for, for how they describe it. Now, it sounds like that's fantastic, but this doesn't always happen. So what might be some obstacles that get in the way of having interprofessional effectiveness? Lacking skills, not knowing what to say, not knowing how to say it, when to say it, or really how to approach the situation overall. Some individuals may not be as effective if they're worrying. If they have worry thoughts, they're second guessing themselves. And this could be they're worrying about bad consequences. If I need to ask for this, what happens if they say no? They may not feel worthy of it. Well, do I actually deserve it? Would they really want to do that for me? And just in general, having poor self-esteem. I'm not sure I even can do this. So this, a number of these skills really are to help develop tools to overcome some of those, those negative thoughts that may stay in the background. <clears throat> Other obstacles to interprofessional effectiveness can be emotions. When we talked with in mindfulness, so we had reasonable mind, wise mind, and emotion mind. If emotion mind is running the show, chances are our interprofessional interprofessional effectiveness is not going to be spot on. The interruption, the not listening, they're going to be running hot and likely not have too much of a filter. Uh, and that can really create an uncomfortable dynamic, especially if they're trying to propose a request. Um, and it may result in an interaction where after the fact, they're really thinking about, oh, that didn't go well. I'm not sure I can do that again in the future. Indecision, it may be difficult to really understand what it is that you're asking for, what it is that you want. There may be a whole host of different situations where you have lots of options. Do you know what it is that you're asking of the other person? And sometimes not being clear on that or saying one thing, but really potentially meaning something else, um, but not realizing that until later on can erode some of those relationships because that communication was really unclear. And then lastly is environment. So you could be in an interaction where there is a power differential, um, a hierarchy in that dynamic, where even if you're requesting, the answer is going to be no, just because that person in a place of power is unwilling to share any of the additional responsibilities or um, benefits, strengths that come along with some of those positions, you're not always going to get along with any everyone. So there may be individuals who are trying to take advantage, who are trying to manipulate, or just who outright you don't get along with. And all of those can also, <clears throat> excuse me, be obstacles to interprofessional effectiveness. So the goal for using these skills and taking some time to think about this is to help individuals develop and maintain better relationships with objective effectiveness, making sure your needs are able to get met with relationship effectiveness so that you can build and maintain healthy relationships and that you maintain your own self-respect so that you're not the one necessarily getting taken advantage of to build and maintain some of those relationships. In order to do that, there are a handful of factors that we really need to consider with these different interactions that happen all of the time every day. Priorities, really thinking about what are the priorities? How important is it that you get what you want versus something that would be relatively close? How important is this relationship? Is this a relationship where if push comes to shove, we, we can damage some of those ties and that would be okay. That would be something that, that you'd be able to live with. What are the capabilities? The interaction that we're having, are we asking something of someone who's unable to provide that to us? Or is our request unrealistic? Something that just absolutely can't be accomplished within a certain period of time getting into the timeliness piece. So making sure that we're providing an ample amount of time for something to get accomplished. Are we prepared for the conversation? As you'll see with some of the tools, especially the dear man, 
it does take a little bit of time. So you need to make sure that you've collected the information that you need and almost set up your version of the dialogue of that narrative ahead of time to be as effective as possible. Considering your goals, what is it that you want of this relationship? And then what is the give and take status? If you're coming in with a request and you repeatedly um, lobby requests to this particular individual, is there a time where you need to re-tip the balance um, to ensure that it's a two-way relationship as opposed to just um, either a give or a take on one party's behalf? So different ways that that can be done, we're going to look at four tools, um, dear man, give, fast, and think, and they're all mnemonics for other things. So we're going to start with dear man. Um, so dear man is one of the skills that can be used for objective effectiveness. Um, it's really important to consider what's your goal of this interaction. And this is a skill that can be used when you're lobbying a request. It can help optimize the likelihood that you're going to get what you want. Maybe not exactly what you want, but at least something close. So dear man stands for describe. So describe the situation, express your feelings. So we don't know what other people are feeling, but we're gonna express our feelings. Ask, uh, assert, ask for what you want. Make sure you are clear on what you want. What is the goal that you're hoping to get out of this request? Reinforce. Um, this is really reinforce the rewards to the other person. If you do this for me, here's what you get out of it. So making sure that that balance is clear. Being mindful in the interaction, focusing just on what you want and not including extraneous information. Appearing confident both in verbal and nonverbal communication skills and negotiation. Ask the individual when you've finished what they think and be willing to negotiate to get close to what you would like. So I did, I have trouble with this one. For some reason, this is not the way that I think. Um, so I did have to write down an example. So something um, that may happen in more of a professional setting. So perhaps you're working with someone who has, um, without asking you, tapped you to now participate in an additional work group or an additional committee to work on a project. So you may want to have this conversation with them um, that this is not something from a capacity perspective that you're able to do. So it would be describing the situation. You volunteered me for this task force that I wasn't prepared for and I wasn't asked about. I feel really frustrated that you put me in a position where it looks like I can't fulfill my responsibilities because of other competing demands. I would like a chance to talk with my supervisor about offsetting some of my other responsibilities so I can dedicate time to this work group. You really need a work group that's going to achieve the success that you're hoping for. And I can't do that if I have to balance all of these other responsibilities. So giving me that time to have that discussion will allow me to dedicate more time to your project. What are your thoughts on, on moving forward a little bit slower or having me not start right away? So that would be an example of making sure that you set up those things. It becomes objective. It is not judgmental. And having been a receiver of a number of dear man, um, my daughter uses this when she wants something. Um, she's pretty effective in it. They very clearly and objectively lay out things. It doesn't mean you have to say yes, but you really are stacking the cards to try to encourage that person to say yes and, and allow you to have what you want. Other skills. So there are two skills, the give and the fast skill. So we're going to um, I'm going to show you both of these, and then I'm going to transition to the videos. So the give skills. Now, these move into relationship effectiveness. So they're skills to keep and maintain relationships. And these can be really effective when you're asking someone for something or when they've asked something of you and you need to say no. Our fast skills um, are related to self-respect. So those interactions should not be... Um, should not result in guilt. It should not be a situation where you're thinking after the fact, oh, I should have said this. I wish I would have done that. I could have um, been more effective in this interaction. 
it, it's really about making sure that you leave that interaction feeling good about the way that it went down. So I'm going to stop this share and start the video when I get you guys back. Here we go. All right. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. OK. The skill give is used to improve or maintain a good relationship with another person during an interaction. Give can be incorporated when you're asking someone for something or saying no to a request. In general, people are more likely to do what you ask of them if they feel cared for and respected, and you are more likely to feel good about yourself when you treat others with care and respect. The acronym GIVE stands for Gentle, Interested, Validate, and Easy Manner. First, be gentle by being nice and respectful in your approach. This usually means four things. One, don't use attacks, verbal or physical. People won't like you and certainly will not comply with your request if they feel disrespected. Two, don't use threats. Describe consequences for not getting what you want calmly and objectively. Tolerate the other person saying no to your request and exit the conversation gracefully. Three, don't judge. This means no name calling, blaming, or guilt trips. Four, don't disrespect. Be respectful with your words, facial expression, and body language. Don't walk out of the conversation. Don't mock with a smile or sarcasm. Don't cut the other person off. Ask yourself, how do I want this person to think about me after this interaction? The I in give stands for acting interested in the other person and what they are saying. This includes listening to their point of view, opinion, or reasons for saying no or making a request of you. If you have a question about something they are saying or you disagree, gently ask and listen for their answer. Again, acting interested with your body language and facial expression is important. Face the person, maintain eye contact, lean towards them, and don't walk away mid-conversation. If they'd like to end the conversation, respect their wishes to talk another time. V stands for validate. Validation is communicating to the other person that their feelings, thoughts, or opinions are understandable. To validate does not necessarily mean to agree or approve. It means seeing the world or situation from the other person's point of view and communicating that back to them. You can validate with words, for example, I can see that you're upset, or I realize this is hard for you and I still want to have this conversation. You can also validate with nonverbal communication, such as nodding, leaning in, making eye contact, and showing the person you are listening. Finally, use an easy manner. It is possible to be assertive and friendly at the same time. Be lighthearted and unafraid to use a little humor. Smile. Ease the other person along. Ditch your attitude and focus on doing what works. Remember, we're trying to maintain a good relationship while also getting your request. No one likes to feel attacked, cornered, or like they're walking on a landmine. Be gentle, act interested, validate, and use an easy manner, and this will increase the likelihood that your relationships will be strong and you will get what you want. Right, that is the first one. Trans Are you able to see the fast one now? Perfect. Yep. I shaped that. I shared that correctly. Yay. Okay. <clears throat> the skill fast is used to help you maintain or increase your self-respect in interpersonal situations. Self-respect is related to how you feel about yourself after an interaction. You can use fast when making a request or saying no to a request. The acronym stands for be fair, no apologies, stick to values, and be truthful. First, be fair to yourself and the other person. Remember to validate your own feelings and wishes as well as the other person's. This means communicating to yourself and them that the current feelings, thoughts, or opinions related to the situation are understandable to you. 
Some people consistently give in to what other people want, never sticking up for their own wishes, while others consistently only do what they want, never considering the other person. Finding a balance of these two positions means being fair to yourself and to the other person. The next fast skill is to not over-apologize. Don't apologize for making the request or for saying no. Don't apologize for having an opinion or for disagreeing. Apologies often imply that you're wrong or making a mistake. When we apologize before making a request like, I'm so sorry, but can you? It can make our request seem unimportant. And over time, apologizing can reduce your self-respect or credibility. Of course, apologize if you've made a mistake, but try to avoid apologizing when no mistake was made. The next skill is to stick to your values. Avoid selling out your values in order to keep the other person happy or liking you. This skill involves first being clear about what your values are and holding on to your position. Some people are willing to sell out everything in order to get others' approval and liking, while others are very reluctant to be flexible and compromise. Which side do you tend to go towards? The skill of sticking to your values is about knowing what your values are and sticking to them, thereby maintaining your self-respect. For example, if you value being kind, but the people you're with want to nastily criticize others, sticking to your values might mean gently leaving the situation or speaking up and asking them to stop. Finally, be truthful. Don't lie or act helpless when you're not. Don't exaggerate or make up excuses. Dishonesty over time will diminish your self-respect. And if you feel you have to lie for some reason, do it mindfully. This means being aware of your lie and doing it with intention instead of lying carelessly or excessively. And if you're someone who lies a lot, be more mindful of when you're choosing to do it so that your self-respect and your relationships don't erode over time. Taken together, the four FAST skills will help you maintain self-respect while navigating interpersonal interactions. Remember to be fair to yourself and the other person, not to over-apologize, stick to your values, and be truthful. All right. <clears throat> so I thought those were a little bit better than me just trying to, to discuss them as is. I think the one thing with be truthful um, that I did see in a few different settings is sometimes that means less is more. If they've asked you for something, the answer may just be no. You don't have to explain why, you don't have to justify, you don't have to apologize. The answer can just be no. Um, and that can be really powerful sometimes in the communication overall. So we talked dear man for our request. We talked give if you need to lobby a request or you're saying no. Fast really is an approach to the way that you're having some of these discussions. And then the last skill that I wanted to include is the think skills. So this think skill is to help reduce negative emotion toward others. Just because you are using some of these skills and being respectful toward others doesn't mean everyone is going to be respectful toward you. Keeping this in mind can be really helpful, especially with relationships that you need to maintain, um, potentially because they're hierarchical type relationships. So think, think about what may be going on in terms of the current situation. Have empathy for that other person's perspective. That doesn't mean you need to agree with what they're doing, but at least to appreciate that they're pretty frustrated or there might have been a motivation that made them take the actions that they took. Look at the interpretations. What are the vast um, array of things that may be going on behind the scenes? Not that they all have to be correct, but it can help broaden your mind to recognize, okay, it might be a little bit more than what it appears to me. Take notice of what's going on, especially with verbal and nonverbal communications with that other person and respond with kindness. That kindness and empathy can help with the maintaining of relationships, but it also does not mean that you need to be a pushover. Thinking back to some of those fast skills, saying no, that might be very difficult for that person who desperately needs your help or was counting on you to do something. 
I recognize that this puts you in a really difficult situation. It's not something I'm able to do at this time. So you can be kind and empathetic for what their situation is without necessarily bowing to whatever the other demands are. So in summary, so our DBT skills, interpersonal effectiveness, really looking at encouraging the development of self-respect and being able to build and maintain those relationships. And that is vitally important, not only in the professional realm, but also on the personal side with friends and family, which some of those relationships and communications can get very difficult as well. So that is it for today. I'll stop my share.